Hello and welcome, I'm Tafra Gadamu. The call for the restitution of Ethiopian objects of immense historical significance, now primarily in the hands of private collectors and museums in Western Europe and North America, is gaining momentum. And the role of the Ethiopian diaspora along that line is said to be very critical. My guest today, Dr. Johannes Zeleke, is one of those individuals playing that role. Uh, Dr. Johannes Zeleke, a very warm welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It's my second time to be with you. There have been plenty of de de developments uh, in the last uh, several months uh, uh, in terms of the restitution of Ethiopian objects currently owned, as I've said in the intro, by individuals, um, as well as uh, a number of institutions in Europe and North America. Uh, we, we are just picking the tip of the iceberg. We just, as far as restitution is concerned, we have a long way to go, right? Absolutely. Uh, what happened to Ethiopian heritage? What happened is Ethiopia was a government, Ethiopia was a state, for different reasons, they were moved out from this country by various issues. Sometimes with military uh, conquests, sometimes with trading. So it starts from the 7th century, 6th century. A lot of Ethiopian heritage has been moved out of Ethiopia to different places. In the last few years, I've been studying those where they are, and I discovered that there are in 14 European countries and in several American cities, in Canada, in Tokyo, uh, in Japan, in China, and in Scandinavian countries. So this amount of distribution uh, is enormous. What does it tell you? It tells us that uh, we Ethiopians never know how much, uh, how much heritage we have, even in the country, and how much heritage we have outside of the country. It's an, it is unknown history of Ethiopian heritage around the world. Europeans due to Ethiopians' unstable conditions, they, exploded, uh, they exploited a lot. Some were moved by uh, diplomats. I know exactly where they are, uh, especially in England. Uh, and some of them were moved by travelers, like James Bruce. He took a lot of Ethiopian heritage to Scotland. I saw those in, Indr in Edinburgh Museum. So they are everywhere. So uh, right now, with the new uh, sentiment of Ethiopia, Ethiopianism, a lot of in the last 20 years, there is, there is a lot of effort to bring back Ethiopian heritage from outside. Plenty of efforts, but as far as success is concerned, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to go because the custodians, they invested a lot in it. Some of the museums, they spent 200 years, 300 years in their, in their, as a custodian. So we, we need to convince them we need to talk to them, we need to have first the catalogs. On the other hand, the country is not ready a lot as well because we don't have enough place to bring and store them and display them and study them. But still, we need to activate the return of the Ethiopian heritage from outside. What, what is the mode of operation like in reclaiming I mean, in, uh, I mean, in getting back these, these objects, it's, it's not just an Ethiopian initiative. You have partners who are friends of Ethiopia, right? Yeah, we have, we have partners of friends of Ethiopia. We have the UNESCO. We have the ECOM. Now there is a tendency to bring back heritage from uh, European countries to their original land. So there is a lot of effort. But the problem is those countries who kept them for 200 years, 300 years, they need something guarantee that the country is ready to accept as well. Uh, our problem is those who are in private hands. In the museums, we know them exactly. We know what is in Vatican. We know what is uh, in Cambridge, University of Cambridge. We know what is in Oxford. Uh, but we don't know how many Ethiopian herds are in the private hands uh, everywhere. Uh, recently, I, no, not recently, about f five years ago, I visited one rich, rich human being, American uh, house, and he invited me to see his collections of Ethiopian icons. He has 200 Ethiopian icons, which you don't have them in our museum or at the Ethiopian studies. So I was talking to him, I was talking to his wife, who is an art, uh, an art historian. She wanted to donate it to the African Art Museum in Washington, D.C. 
I'm just negotiating if she can donate here to Ethiopia. So it's everywhere. So we have no clue, that's what you're saying, we have no clue how many are in private collections, right? Yes, we have no clue at all. The only thing what I know is... Because they don't display them, they, they don't, don't display them. They don't sell them, they're uh, just in, merely in their collection. Yes, the problem is the value of the items uh, is not recognized much by their children. So if the children doesn't like it, they'll just sell it on auction. That's how we trace them where they are. Otherwise, in most rich people's house, it is, it's their private museum. Yeah, and passing from gen passing one generation, from generation to, or to they another. donate it to, to, to a museum sometimes, yeah. I saw a lot of collections in California. Uh, in fact, I was invited to give a talk on the Egyptian history of the Queen of Shiva. So it was a big argument, who is the Queen of Shiva, what the history, all that items, all that artwork, what I saw was from Ethiopia. It was smuggled from Ethiopia sometimes, in probably when the British were here, or it was smuggled by the British Army individuals who sold them somewhere in America. So it's everywhere. You, once you know where these are, what do you do? I mean, uh, as someone who is heavily engaged uh, in, in the restitution of Ethiopian objects, so wherever they are, what do you, once you know, who owns what as far as this heritage, uh, th these objects are concerned, what, what do you do? What are the, the first steps you take? I mean, you just, you just engage them, you just talk to them, and you say, okay, I, we in Ethiopia need these objects because they belong to us, yeah. and we want to buy them. What, what is the... What is I, I've been talking to Ethiopian embassies everywhere, and sometimes they go to the Ethiopian Ministry of Culture, out of me to be an advisor to the Ethiopian embassy, regarding the heritage. So what I do is I engage them talking. I explain them where I write them the original sites where they brought them. Once I see them, I determined where they belong because I was a custodian here at the National Museum as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, engaging is one, two, convincing them that not to sell it to anyone. There was a lot of times on auctions and we convince the uh, the, the property owners not to auction it. If they sell it, we can, we can, we can buy it in base price. So that's how we... So that you privately, separately deal with them? Deal with them, yeah. yeah. Now there is a National Restitution Committee in Washington, in Addis Ababa, and we established our own small non-profit organization in America to bring back Ethiopian heritage. Recently I brought... I understand that you were one yeah. course. Tell me about that. How yeah. did you manage to get that back? Well, there is a Greek man who is a Greek Orthodox fellow, a professor at Georgetown University. He just donated it to the church. The Ethiopian church? To the Ethiopian church. He said it belongs here. He's an art historian. He's an iconograph. So he told me that if I can determine the age, I look at it, I see that this is beyond the 16th century. So I said, if you donate it to Ethiopia, he gave us, and I brought it officially, and I gave it, I handed it to the Ministry of Culture Restitution Committee. So it sounds like something that's I mean, pretty much straightforward. straightforward, but it is not, is it? He, because he, this guy is a historian, and he believes that this Orthodox cross belongs to Ethiopia, not to decorate his house. So he just decided to donate us, and it was his generous uh, attitude that brought this to a light for all of us. So now Ethiopians are moving to buy this kind of cross, this kind of heritage all over the world. The diaspora has raised, uh, whenever we need them, they raised money to bring back. So there are a lot of volunteers to, be, to pay to bring back Ethiopian heritage. Many people who own Ethiopian, uh, Ethiopian uh, uh, items. Uh, uh, items don't think likewise, don't think the same way, this uh, gentleman. Uh, yeah, what, what I did was uh, for many, uh, you know, when we established the restitution committee in America, I taught for nearly six months in Zoom and talking about Ethiopia the typology of the heritage from the Stone Age to uh, modernity. So what are heritage? It's not only the crosses, it's not only the church items, but all decorative artists, all 
what the new terminology, the nations and nationalists, what they are using. All specific, beautiful artworks are heritage. So we start to collect ethnographical materials. We start to collect archaeological materials. There are a lot of archaeological materials everywhere outside of Ethiopia. If you go to University of California, Berkeley, there is a huge collection of fossils still is not returned. If you go to Paris, at the Natural History Museum, there are a lot of fossils taken in the 1930s from Omo. So it's not only the church objects that are heritage. There are so many heritage of Ethiopia all over the world. If you go to Japan, they have a lot of ethnographic collection, ethnographical collections of the southern people from everywhere. What we don't have it at the Ethiopian Studies or at the National Museum. So the heritage, when they moved out, we never know why they moved out. But now we can concern it, and we are, we are looking uh, a way to get it back. So we are making an awareness here at the nation, at the, at the national level, at the federal level, that they have to be aware. Now they have, built, they have, they have renovated the Grand Palace. So we are talking to Russians if they can give us back some of the artifacts that they took after the Adwa War, after the Adwa War. There are 23,000 Ethiopian relics at the Museum of Anthropology and Ethnography in Russia. So it's everywhere. We don't know even the number. Uh -huh. the, the reason I know the number in Russia was I was the custodian of those Ethiopians, Ethiopian items, and I, I did the inventory myself. So when you say we, you're talking about the Ethiopian diaspora uh, primarily? Yeah, the Ethiopian diaspora. How engaged, how engaged are they? Because Me, I'm, I'm just equating them. We have an association of Ethiopian scholars and professionals. We have an association of... Ethiopian, Ethiopia Winnet, that's what it's called, Ethiopianism. So all these associations are taking lectures from me, and we are, I'm engaging them. There are over 600, 700 professors all over the United States who are attending our lectures. So we are educating each other. I'm sure some of them have joined you here in Ethiopia, oh, right? Oh, now? No, absolutely. No, there, are, there are a lot of them are here. So how engaged are they in terms of convincing uh, their governments, because in most cases they are Ethiopian Americans, Ethiopian Some. English, whatever, whatever, you know. So how engaged are they in terms of convincing their governments to be uh, morally responsible in terms of, uh, you know, exploring the moral imperatives of returning yeah. these, these objects back to Ethiopia? Well, uh, How successful are they? You see, the first thing is educating Ethiopians. That's the most important one, mm -hmm. because even Ethiopians, they don't know what their heritage are. Uh, in 2000, I remember, I organized a folk, a folk life festival about Ethiopia on the mall at Washington, D.C. It was officially opened by President Bush. Then, most of the Ethiopians, they never know that. Enormous Ethiopian heritage are at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. I invited the Minister of, Ministry of Culture, Professor Hirut. I made her visit that museum, and she saw all the collections. How come President uh, Teddy Roosevelt acquired all these uh, objects? I just discovered that he visited Egypt and he got it from Egypt. The Egyptians gave it to him. These are Ethiopian heritage and a good, as a good gesture to American president. So it's the president's collection. Now we are talking to the Smithsonian. If they can give us a part of it, we are just on ongoing conversation. Yeah, how, how about other, other Ethiopians in the diaspora? How engaged are they in this? Because uh, it's, 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 it's all about uh, engaging their, their own governments, right? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, we, we, when we identify something, they talk to the governors, they talk to the, uh, to, to, to the mayors, uh, we talk to the individuals. That's an ongoing process. The first thing is how to do, educate Ethiopians how to make them understand the typology of heritage. That's why, you see, 90% of Ethiopians, they feel that a heritage is a church painting, a cross, or a sistrum, or a drum. So educating Ethiopians took more time than educating Americans. No. So, but now the awareness is there. But in terms, when you when try to uh, to reclaim these objects, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, I mean, it looks like it's a, a totally different ball game. Yeah, they lobby for that. They are willing to pay. 
if there is an auction, there are a lot of good Ethiopians who are ready to pay. So they're engaging. So the, the numbers are increasing, right? The numbers are increasing a lot. How about the, 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 the governments? How, how sensitive are they to the demands put forward by Ethiopians in this restitution process? It, I mean, I'm not just talking about America, but uh, also other European countries. It depends. Of because the, it's sometimes someone was arguing, I mean, we need to name and shame them. Is that one of the policies that needs to be implemented? No, no, because uh, we, we, we should be, be careful not to shame them sometimes. You can shame them, the British army. You can shame them, the Italian invaders. But uh, we can shame the individual scientists, for example. Mr. Littmann, who excavated Aksum, he took a lot of heritage, and it's in Germany. And Germans never talk about it. Other scientists, they moved a lot of stuff from Ethiopia as well. We shame those guys. But in terms of the museums, we have to discuss with them because they are not shy. They display them, they show them, they, wrote, they write about them. So still, we have more documentation for us. That's very important. On the time when we bring them back, that will help a lot because they have a good, a good preservation. So we have to uh, discuss with them. We have to try to bring them, uh, we have to try to convince them to bring and display some of the items in the museums here. And we have to convince the Ethiopian government and the Ethiopian uh, authorities to have a better understanding of what the heritage are around the world. There is a big gap, a vacuum, the, uh, between the understanding of heritage and tourism. Everyone is talking about tourism. That's fine. Tourism is messy. You know, if you bring tourists hundreds and thousands to Laliwala, unless you know exactly what you are doing, they will destroy the, her the heritage as well. They will steal the, the materials as well. I know... Uh, it's much more difficult to steal the objects these days yeah. than it was the case in oh, the years yes, past. And 25 years ago, yes. You're right. But, you know, big, notably human uh, delegates will come to Ethiopia. And those delegates, they just take it out like in the diplomatic pouch, a delegate with a private plane, they just move out some heritage as well. I remember 22 years ago, I was walking in Nairobi, and I saw the crosses that I registered them in Lalibala on sale at a souvenir shop. Really? Yes. And How dare they? they yeah, because I, I, I because the you're talking about the inventory department that the Ministry of Culture yeah, used yeah. to have in the years past you know, identifying every single object. And we, uh, we caught it. And yes. Yes. So I called Richard Leakey. Uh, I was in, in his office. He was just angry. The lady was very popular photojournalist. How dear you brought from Lalibad all this. Then we call, uh, there was uh, Dr. Kasai was the head of the, Antiqu the Antiquities Department here. I called him from Nairobi and they sent a delegation and they brought it back. So it happened many times. So, so, of course, good for tourism, right? I mean, the more you talk about restitution, you, you're in a way promoting Ethiopia. Oh, yes, it's good for, uh, it's good for tourism. You see, rather than taking and displaying Lucy in, in Texas, it would have been much better to advertise and bring tourists to Ethiopia. The more you have the objects and the museums, in Ethiopia, more tourists will come, more students will come. You know, the middle class students of America are much richer than the richest Americans in, in Ethiopia, the richest, the richest Ethiopians in Ethiopia. So students, what we have at George Washington University, 50%, 60% of them, they like to travel around the world. And Ethiopia was very popular in the last two, 20 years, 15 years, 20 years. It became on the map. We erased the attitude of the Americans, uh, which they were told by Michael Jackson, we are the world and so on. Now they talk about Ethiopia more. Exactly, that's what I'm talking. There is, uh, it's interesting that you raised it because when you talk about Ethiopia, still talking about famine, famine war, war, conflict, and so, and so on. So, so you in the diaspora yeah. 
have a very important role to play, I guess, which you and your colleagues are trying to do, right? Yes. Look, for example, my son spent almost a year here because, because of the corona he went back. He said he brought his friends. If each diaspora children brought one, they can bring a millions of e e students, their friends, to Ethiopia. That's what tourism is about. High school friends, high school peers, college students, researchers, all these are interested in Ethiopia. The most important thing is we have to talk about Ethiopia. Not only the, uh, you know, all news are bad sometimes, but the, as long as you have a good, uh, a good knowledge about the heritage, they're not afraid of any war or any, you know, at, Ethiopia is not much dangerous than Egypt. <laughs> you know, if you walk in Cairo, it's much worse. In Addis Ababa, it's much peaceful. I went to the war areas. Uh, I went to Gondor and Baharda. It's much better. There are tensions. But still, every travel agent is writing me when and how they can, they can come back to Ethiopia. So Ethiopia is on the map of tourism already. We have to work hard to, to encourage more Ethiopians to come. The more Ethiopian comes, more tourists will come. If Ethiopian stops not coming, the tourists are, are not coming. So I have to work on the diaspora a lot. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for giving me the chance, as always.